Hello, my name is Sarah. And I'm Kerry. On behalf of all the staff working here, we would like to welcome you to the neonatal unit at New Cross Hospital. We both work on the neonatal unit and you will see us whilst your baby is a patient here. Having a baby on the neonatal unit can be a very worrying time. This video is to try and answer any questions you might have to do with your baby's time on here. The neonatal unit is part of the Staffordshire, Shropshire and Black Country newborn and maternity network which comprises five hospitals that work hand in hand to deliver the right care at the right time to the right baby. These hospitals are Russell's Hall in Dudley and the Manor in Warsaw, which together with New Cross Neonatal Unit provide care for newborns in the Black Country. The network also includes Princess Royal Hospital in Telford and the Royal Stoke University Hospital. As a result, while your baby may have been born at New Cross Hospital, care is provided as a network. Here at New Cross Hospital, we can look after all babies born at all gestational ages, but our chief skill is in providing specialised care for those babies that are born under 27 weeks of age and those that need life support, cooling or other intensive care help. For Russell's Hall Dudley and Warsaw Manor, their chief skill lie in providing care for bigger and more stable babies. We all work together as a network to make sure the right baby is cared for in the right place. On your first visit, you will usually be brought to the unit or given directions to the unit by the nurse or midwife looking after you. To enter the unit, you will need to press the intercom located to the right side of the door. You will be asked who you are and who you have come to visit before being allowed onto the unit. This is for security reasons. On entering the unit, we ask that you place your coats and any non-valuable items in the sitting room. This is where you will also find toilet facilities. A member of staff will discuss with you the care your baby will be receiving. This may be done at the cot side, or if the unit is particularly busy, you will be taken to a quiet room. Your first time on the unit can be quite daunting because of the equipment and wires that may be attached to your baby. A member of staff will explain the need for the equipment and we will look at this in more detail later on in the DVD. Visiting for parents is open access 24 hours a day. Siblings may also visit if they are accompanied by a parent. Each time you visit the unit, you will need to gain access via the intercom and place your belongings in the visitor's room. You will also need to collect a parent sticker from reception before entering the ward. This is so staff can identify who you are. Stickers are colour coded and you will need to collect a new one each day you visit. It is very important that you do not let anybody else onto the unit via the main door. This is for the safety of all the babies on the unit. Grandparents can visit between the hours of half past two and half past four and half past seven and half past eight, but must be accompanied by a parent. On a Sunday afternoon, you can have any other two visitors between the hours of half past two and half past four. There should ideally not be more than two people at the cot side and one of these should always be a parent. While on the unit, we ask that mobile phones be switched to silent and any calls are taken outside the unit. We also request that you do not bring toys, flowers or balloons onto the unit due to infection prevention. If you are travelling by car, Visitor parking is available on the maternity and neonatal car park. Parking tariffs are displayed near the pay stations located on the car park. If your baby is on the unit for a longer period of time, there is an option to purchase a weekly parking permit, which works out more economically than paying per day. For more information on this, 
please ask a member of staff. New Cross Hospital is situated around two miles outside of Wolverhampton City Centre. The number 59 bus from the city will drop you within walking distance to New Cross Hospital. Wolverhampton City Centre has excellent transport links across the region. These include rail, metro and local taxi firms. We ask that you wash your hands with soap and water before entering the unit and that parents wash their hands before and after handling their baby. There is also hand gel available at each cot side. The soap and hand gel provided are suitable for all faiths. If you would like a hand washing demonstration, please ask a member of the nursing team and we will arrange this for you. If your baby is very poorly or you have travelled a distance to be with your baby, we have parent flats where you can stay to be close to your baby. You will usually be able to stay in the flat for a few days as we like to have the flats available for other parents. There are a total of five flats. For your convenience, there is a kitchen located next to the parent flats. Parents are welcome to use these facilities along with the microwave and fridge located inside. For safety reasons, children are not allowed inside the kitchen area. Within the hospital grounds, you will find both WH Smiths which is located on the ground floor of the maternity block and in the main hospital building, and Greg's, which you will also find in the main hospital building. Both serve hot and cold refreshments. There are also a number of vending machines selling small snacks throughout the hospital. We ask that you do not bring food or drink to your baby's cot side. However, you are welcome to use the visitor's room. For your convenience, there is a free cash machine located near to the children's ward on the ground floor and also another in the main hospital. Nearby, and only a five minute stroll from the hospital grounds, you will find Bentley Bridge Retail Park. Here you will find many eateries. There is also a Sainsbury's supermarket and boots for any supplies you might need. The neonatal unit is split into four main areas. Bluebell room, along with three side rooms, is our intensive care area. The sickest babies on the unit are usually cared for here. Poppy room is our high dependency room. This is for babies who are less ill. Sunflower room is our low dependency room which is for babies that are not quite ready for home and still require additional care. You may also be moved to transitional care ward, but we will tell you more about this ward later. As the unit expands, we may have more rooms. There are many machines within these rooms. You may feel very intimidated by the noise, wires and tubes attached to your baby. At some point, a member of staff will explain the purpose of the equipment being used. At many points during the day, you will hear these machines make many different noises and alarms. They may also display many different numbers. Although this might be frightening for you, please be reassured that nurses are trained to understand and respond to equipment as needed. Each weekday, there are three ward rounds at nine o'clock, five o'clock and half past nine. On a Saturday and Sunday, the ward rounds take place at nine o'clock in the morning and nine o'clock at the evening. Ward rounds are conducted by medical staff and the nurse looking after your baby to assess their treatment and progress. Nurse handover times are at seven o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the afternoon and seven o'clock in the evening. At these times, parents are asked not to be present to maintain patient confidentiality. Parents can wait in the parent's sitting room next to the reception. 
This is when your baby's information is shared with the nurse caring for your baby. At times, you may see staff wearing red aprons. We ask that you do not disturb staff at this time as they are carrying out drugs rounds. Quiet time is one o'clock in the afternoon till two and five o'clock of the evening till six. This is when the lights are dimmed, noise is kept to a minimum and no procedures take place allowing baby to rest. However, these times may vary according to the needs of the babies. You will see a wide range of staff working on the unit. At any one time, we have senior and junior sisters, staff nurses, screening nurse, healthcare assistants and student nurses. We also have the medical team, which consists of consultants, senior and junior doctors and advanced nurse practitioners. There can be other hospital staff present on the ward that carry out x-rays and ultrasounds whom you may see. These could also include dietitians, physiotherapists and pharmacists. At times throughout the day we have available the breastfeeding advisor, smoking cessation team and us, your stalk support workers. Finally, we have a team of receptionists, housekeepers and domestics. Your baby may be placed in an incubator. This is so your baby can be kept warm and at the correct temperature. The incubator, as you can see, is a clear plastic box which is fitted with a special heater. It has holes in the side to enable both you and staff to touch your baby. Incubators are not just for premature babies, but also for term babies that require intensive care. You will also see that at times the incubator is covered. This is to keep the light and noise out so your baby can rest as you will notice the neonatal unit can be a bright and occasionally noisy place. Above the baby's incubator, you will see a large monitor. You will notice wires coming from it. These may be attached to your baby's chest or abdomen. Additionally, you may see wires on your baby's foot or hand. This tells staff about your baby's heartbeat, oxygen levels, breathing, oxygen saturation and blood pressure. They are recorded on the monitor screen and you will notice many lines and numbers. This gives the neonatal team a digital reading of your baby's condition. The monitor will alarm when baby's vital signs are, are out of range. If this happens, the alarm will ring and the nurses will respond in an appropriate manner to check your baby. Not all alarms mean your baby is in trouble. Sometimes, if your baby has fluid or mucus in their mouth, they require a little suction. This is a tube that is placed in the baby's mouth and sucks away any secretions. The ventilator is a machine that helps baby with breathing by using a tube that goes from the mouth to their windpipe. Other words you may hear are CPAP, BiPAP, high flow oxygen or low flow oxygen. These are other techniques to help with your baby's breathing. With these supports, your baby breathes for themselves. However, you will notice two small prongs in their nose or a small mask over their nose that delivers a small amount of support through the nose to the lungs of your baby to help with their breathing. Whilst your baby is on the neonatal unit, they may be too sick to tolerate milk feeds. It may be necessary to give your baby nutrition via intravenous fluids. Your baby may require medication and this may need to be given via intravenous infusion or injection. This is given in a special pump which you will see at the cot side. We use pumps to ensure we give the right amount of fluid and medication intravenously. The pump is attached to a cannula that goes directly into your baby. Your baby may have an umbilical catheter. This is a special catheter inserted into the vein or artery of the belly button. 
This is so medical or nursing staff can give medicines or monitor blood by withdrawing samples from your baby. Whilst on the neonatal unit, your, ma your baby may become jaundiced and require treatment called phototherapy. Phototherapy is a special blue light that is placed either over or under the baby. This light is shone onto your baby's skin. It is the light that enables your baby's body to convert the bilirubin that is causing the jaundice to be passed out in baby's urine and stools. Whilst under the light, you may notice that your baby's stools are loose and that baby may appear quieter. This is normal. You will be offered a pair of protective glasses to wear when your baby is receiving phototherapy. If there are none by the bedside, please ask a member of our team. Whilst on the unit, your baby may need medical tests and scans. This is so staff can appropriately treat your baby and ensure that the treatment is working. Results will be explained to you by the staff on the unit. Some sick and very small babies have a scan of the brain whilst on the unit. The results of this will be shared with you as soon as possible. All babies will have a sample of blood taken from the heel at five days old. You may hear this referred to as the blood spot. Babies born under 32 weeks gestation will have a repeat test at 28 days. This tests for a number of rare but serious conditions. A hearing screen will also be offered to any baby that has been on the unit more than 48 hours. There are two different screenings that take place. The results will be given straight away to you. Babies under 32 weeks gestation or 1.5 kilograms will be screened for the retinopathy of prematurity. This looks at the retina and eye development. Some babies will be offered a hip ultrasound to exclude problems of the hip. There is a standard set of criteria used by the unit to determine which babies need screening. Babies that are on the unit 60 days after their birth date will begin their course of regular childhood immunisations. Your consent will be needed for this. Every baby on the neonatal unit gets a pre-discharge newborn examination that you may hear referred to as a NIPE. This is carried out to pick up any potential problems and is repeated when your baby is eight weeks old by your GP or health visitor. We place great importance on the expression of milk and breastfeeding. Even if you decide not to breastfeed, the breast milk you express is very important to your baby, especially at this time when they are small and sick. On the unit, we have breast pumps available for you to use whilst you are visiting your baby. If you delivered at New Cross, you will also be able to loan a breast pump for use at home while your baby is in hospital. A small refundable deposit will, will be required by New Cross Hospital General Office and neonatal staff can organise the necessary paperwork. You will be advised how to express and store your milk and will be supported with breastfeeding by our team. We also have a breastfeeding advisor available to offer further support. If you decide to breastfeed, it is important that you eat and drink regularly. Therefore, a hot meal is provided for any breastfeeding moms that spend the day on the unit. If you prefer to express your milk in private, we have a breastfeeding room available in Sunflower Room. We also have screens for privacy in Poppy and Bluebell rooms. Where possible, we encourage moms to express their milk at the cot side as being close to your baby will help the process. Whilst your baby is a patient on the unit, we ask that you provide a number of items your baby will need. These items may vary depending on the size of your baby and the room on the neonatal unit that your baby is being treated in. 
These items may include nappies and nappy sacks, cotton wool, bottles and bottle brushes if preferred feeding choice. Your nurse will advise you on what to bring in. This may be different in each of the areas that your baby is cared for in. If you decide to bring in clothes for your baby, please ensure that these are clearly labelled to avoid confusion. Parents are encouraged to use breast milk. However, if you do decide to use formula, please note that we only provide certain brands and to check with a member of the team as you may need to supply your own. However small or sick your baby is, you, the parents, are the most important people in your baby's life. Staff will involve you in the care of your baby as soon as you are ready. You may feel ap apprehensive at first, but staff will help give you the confidence to do this. It is important for you to have contact with your baby involving touch, voice and smell. As soon as your baby's condition allows, you will be able to have a cuddle and some skin-to-skin -skin contact. You may hear this referred to as kangaroo care. The neonatal unit is working hard towards integrating families into the supportive care provided for baby, especially as they get better and closer towards going home. On the neonatal unit, we understand it can be a very stressful time for families. We feel it is incredibly important to feel supported throughout your journey. We encourage you to attend our Stork Coffee, Cake and Chat group, which is held fortnightly in the visitors room. Here you can speak to both the Stork trainers and also support each other. Before leaving the unit, you will be asked to attend the Stork programme. This programme provides you with the skills, information and confidence to help keep your baby safe at home. We will be discussing safe sleep, recognising the poorly baby, basic life support, weaning and breastfeeding. On the unit, we have the Starlight Room. This is available for parents providing a peaceful place for quiet thought, private conversation, reflection and prayer. We offer religious and spiritual support for all beliefs. If you wish to speak to a person of your faith, please ask a member of staff and we will arrange it for you. In the main building of the hospital, there is a multi-faith prayer room available for use. We also have a family liaison counsellor who is available to speak to parents who wish to take up this service. Transitional care is a ward located on D9 where babies who need a little more nursing and monitoring are cared for. The main carer is mum and she is able to stay with baby on the ward. Nurses will provide a nursing care and parents are encouraged to meet the other needs of a newborn baby. As with the neonatal unit, parents will be supported with feeding and care of their baby. It is the parent's responsibility to provide nappies, clothes, and formula milk if this is the desired method of feeding. On transitional care, all meals for mum are provided with hot and cold drinks available at all times. Partners and the baby's siblings are able to visit between the hours of 10 o'clock in the morning till 9 o'clock in the evening. General visiting for other family members, excluding children, is 1 o'clock till 2 and 6 o'clock till 7 each day. We request that there are no more than two visitors at any time. It may be possible that your baby will be moved from New Cross Hospital to another hospital or to New Cross from a different hospital if it is felt necessary. This will only be done if it is in the best interests of your baby. Care practice may differ depending on the hospital your baby will be transferred to. However, we would like to reassure you that this will not impact on your baby's care. 
If you have any concerns about this, please talk to your consultant or the sister in charge. When your baby arrives on the neonatal unit, he or she may be placed in one of our four areas. Depending on how sick your baby is and what the requirements are for nursing care for your baby. The sickest babies who need the most intense support from nursing and medical teams are nursed in Bluebell. Once your baby is bigger and more stable, your baby will be moved to either high dependency, special care or even up to transitional care. It is possible that your baby may start in any area and move in any direction. As baby gets better, more input from you as a parent is required and less input from nurses and doctors with regard to a baby's medical needs. This means that while you are always engaging with your baby in all the areas on the neonatal unit, as you move towards baby getting better and therefore towards home, your involvement in baby's care and feeding and nurture on the unit become more important. By this stage, the medical ward rounds and nursing rounds around your baby become less frequent. In this area of the unit, the emphasis is on keeping mother and baby together in preparation for baby going home once the nursing and medical team are satisfied. Babies in transitional care do not need very frequent medical reviews and you will find, especially if you have moved to transitional care from the unit downstairs, that the number of times you will see your doctor will be different. In this time in hospital, the focus is on you bonding with your baby, establishing feeding and preparing for home, while waiting for minor medical or feeding issues in your baby that need to be resolved. When your baby is getting ready to go home, the community team will come and visit you on the unit. They will support you in caring for your baby once you are discharged. You will be given the opportunity to stay in the flat with your baby prior to discharge, should it be available. On the day of discharge, it may take several hours to get the relevant paperwork in order before you can leave the unit. For this reason, we ask that you are patient whilst we carry out this task. You will be given a red book, which will be a record of your baby's development. This will be completed each time your baby is seen by a health professional throughout their childhood. If for any reason you need to discuss issues about your baby's care that cannot be addressed on the units, we have the Patient Advice and Liaison Service, otherwise known as PALS. They can be found at Zone Z in the hospital main building. PALS act on behalf of their service users when handling patient and family concerns. They liaise with staff, managers and, where appropriate, other relevant organisations to negotiate speedy solutions and to help bring about changes to the way those services are delivered. PALS will also signpost patients and families to local or national based support agencies as appropriate.